okay welcome to robotics 2 class and i just want to make sure my online students can hear me okay here we go okay that's awesome now as i said i have uh, two things in mind for today the first thing is i would go through some very basic slides and those are like what are the components of drones uh, how traditionally the drones are built uh, and then how would you operate those drones and some preliminary information then what i want to do is i want to pass around some drones for you to take a look at and then i would also show you how to set up the matlab environment to program the drones and if time permits we will run some simple simulink scripts uh, uh, once again the bottom line is you don't need to buy any of those drones i have already purchased the drones but i do not have enough drones so that i can give one telo and one mambo to each student so if you want to check out a mambo and a telo two drones not one two drones you have to form a group of four students and take the collective responsibility for that drone drone hardware is expensive so basically talo is about when i bought it 129 mambo anywhere between 40 to 50 bucks so you would be checking out a hardware which is worth about 175 dollars and you have to take care of it and return it in one piece because i want to use it again next year for some reason you break it then you will have to replace it with your own personal funds only then you check it out or uh, you can buy the the platform from ebay and you can play with it as a matter of fact some students mentioned that they want to add some reinforcement learning to the, the base project or they want to do something else to the project those are the fantastic platforms if you really want to do swarming low level programming learn about uh, ai with the drones feature recognition face recognition all that stuff i would be uploading the pro project one uh, this uh, weekend project one would comprise of you will have to finish one coursera class on aerial robotics uh, in four weeks and there is drone blocks studio which will actually show you how to program the telo using node.js python and other software tools and it will also give you an access to a full-blown halo simulator in the software so you can write your program in the software and then flash that program to the drone wirelessly so you will have access to your the first assignment will comprise of doing the aerial robotics course on coursera you can audit it it should not take you more than three weeks to finish. That's a very basic course, which talks about the simple drone dynamics. Like how do you control the drone? How do you change? What is the PID control of the drone, et cetera, et cetera. That would allow me to discuss the low level programming and advanced concepts on, uh, on, uh, uh, on drone dynamics. That being said, at the end of the class, what I want you to do is, if you are ready, you can come to my office and four students should come to my four students should come to my office and I will give you a piece of paper uh, that you have to put your name on. And I think I emailed that to everyone and then just turn it in and you can check out the drones. So you can actually take the drone and take those drones with you. But there are some things which I want to mention. If you purchase, if you have purchased the drone on eBay, which is a drone platform, you are going to get this. This is the bare bone airframe that you are going to get. 
and this is what i would give you if you were to check out the mambo drone so this is what you are gonna get oh you can't see yeah it has the blurry background <laughs> okay so this is what you are gonna get this drone is a bare platform if you bring this drone to class you should not add props to it no props we don't want drones to be flying in the class or somebody getting hurt you will be responsible for purchasing the prop for this drone because i promise you you will break a lot of props so you will be responsible for purchasing the prop for this drone this drone is also going to need a battery and that but you will be also responsible for purchasing the battery and i would recommend buying two or three batteries because one battery would last you about seven to eight minutes and sometimes that is not sufficient so buy two or three batteries and i would strongly recommend to buy a case uh, you don't have to buy a pelican case you can buy a hard foam case which you will get about for 10 bucks at amazon to carry the drones because those drones actually mambo is very precious mambo is out of production and if you and i could i got my hands on whatever mambos were out there but we still matlab comes with the firmware flight control firmware for telo mambo is the platform of choice where we can program it with simulink and we can do a lot of fun stuff with the drone so be extremely extremely careful the real parrot drone if you were to buy the full fledged drone it will come something like this there are clockwise props and counterclockwise props so you can see there are props which are marked diagonally opposite so they are one pair the other props is one pair so when you purchase the props you have to follow the right way to mount those you don't need we are not going to need props for next uh, for this month so we can do all the, the first few laps uh, without the props if you bring your mambo to class no props the other thing which i would strongly recommend you to do is uh, this has this basically uh, has guards i would strongly encourage you to use these guards these guards are unfortunately not available what you can do is the telo drone that you are going to check out the telo drone you are going to check out already has the prop guards if you when it comes to flying the mambo you won't be flying the mambo in this month mambo flying would happen in february or mid february at that time when you are going to fly you can use the prop guards for telo and attach those prop guards on the mambo everyone understood this that will protect the props and that will actually protect your uh, hands as well so they fit so you can use the prop guards for martello on mambo when you fly mambo everyone understood this yes, you are also gonna need a um, yeah Oh, if you bought the one on today, yeah. does it come with the proper? No, it doesn't come. It just, he, that dude just provides you with this. I will circulate this. Just for the mambo or for the whole kit? No, Telo comes with the whole kit. Okay. Telo will come with the whole kit, prop guards, props, spare props, then mission pad, everything. Okay. The mambo will just come bare bones. So let me watch you guys. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Mambo has a prop guard. The original Mambo comes with this, like this. Mambo also comes with a cannon and a grabber. So you can basically, you see these four holes, Lego holes. You can mount a cannon 
and mambo can do a warfare like uav fighting the mambo that this is the mambo that i'm gonna give you the 49 bucks. 40 bucks yeah 40 plus whatever. yeah so uh Yeah. Sir, you had mentioned last class there was a uh, that you're working or you're trying to get a space at Tempe that's specifically for have you got it for drone use. So if we're good enough, uh, can we all meet there and have like a drone war with each other? <laughs> <laughs> if you if you get to that point, it's yeah. not a question. No, no, no. So so realize what you're saying, drone war. To, if you get to that point, absolutely. Okay. So but I doubt it. It's on us. Okay. Yeah, it's on you. Roger that. Yeah. I mean, I would see. <clears throat> have you seen the movie Matrix? I love it. <laughs> 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 not, the, not the last one, the first one. No, the yeah, very first one. Okay. So in that movie, Matthew gives the red pill and the blue pill. Correct. Correct. I'm ready. But, uh, so, but he says. Say something to Neo that is very important. I can show you the door, but <laughs> you are the one to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right. So I, I'm gonna show you the door. Okay. You can open the drone studio. Roger that. Please stop watching. Anyone? Okay. Uh, uh, too much fun. So anyway, so uh, I'm. Yes. There's a drone studio here. Oh, yeah. Drone studio is at Tempe. I don't think there's none here at all. There is small studio here. No, so there is a small studio here, which is spec 165. Uh, it's a robotic studio. You can fly drones there. But the drone studio at Tempe, which is which was a, a basketball court. It got converted into motion capture cameras, and it's a fantastic facility. And yours truly is an interim director of the drone studio, so my students will have access to it. So, <laughs> so uh, here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to work out the schedule. So I, I have a uh, few students, like I think uh, Seja, you can be at Tempe, right? And there is uh, Surya. Yeah, so they can meet you at uh, Tempe Drone Studio and help you out. And here I have uh, Nero and then I have Tatwik. They live on Poly campus. They can help you with the labs on Poly. And I commend them for their hard work. They, they basically work entire break and finish all the courses of courses and all the labs and wrote the report and all that stuff so so you will get help here or you will get help at tempe campus and i would be at tempe and i would be at poly as well so not at the same time if, if you break the drone i'm telling you you have to pay for you have to get me another drone or i'm not going to give you your grade <laughs> so <laughs> that is what you'll be signing <laughs> when you when you will check out the drone. And again, there is a safety sheet that you will not blame me for any mistakes or cut fingers or anything like that. So okay, uh, too much fun, too much fun. Okay, so let me quickly go through this chapter. This chapter is fairly straightforward. That are going to talk about what is the fuselage, what is the battery, what is the transmitter, how the drone is controlled, what are the basic safety uh, implications. And then once this is done, uh, I would show you how to set up the Mambo. Telo setting up is super easy. Setting up Mambo is a little tricky. So I will show you how to set up the Mambo. Once you check out the drone tonight, go home, try to set it up. And I promise you, you would fail. And then when you come to class on Tuesday, I will show it to you again. But then bring drone, bring a USB cable, and then we will create a, 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 a 
basically personal area network with the drone and then i'll show you how to upload the how to change the firmware and all that stuff so let's go back to the the today's class so what are the basic components of the drone uh, in this class i'm just going to give you uh, uh, what is airframe what is propulsion system what is the ground control unit what is the nomenclature that is used to describe the drone and then finally we will do a demo so believe you me i play with all these platforms so basically this is the dji uh, plus dji clone platform so what you have is you have a fuselage you have a landing gear you have esc esc stands for electronic speed controller you would have motor motor is a brushless dc motor so basically it has three inputs and then esc actually controls the speed of the motor there is a battery and there is a prop so prop actually rotates creates the thrust and when the since prop has some mass as the prop is rotating it will give you a counter clockwise reaction torque on the fuselage you have rc transmitter you have rc receiver rc receiver controls the esc rc receiver would send pwm signals and that will control the speed of the esc in the drones that we are going to play with uh, in these drones basically you we don't have transmitter we can use our smartphone as transmitter they have a built in receiver now if you want to make the drone completely autonomous what you can do is you can interface that with a, uh, something called as autopilot once you have an autopilot it will take care of stabilization batch planning and then going from point a to point b if you want a video feed from the drone you can add something called as the radio telemetry now what is the difference between these small drones that we are going to fly those can be controlled with smartphones and the big drones over here the biggest difference is the range if you have an rc transmitter that is operating on gigahertz range it can go up to 2 miles or 3 miles but the drones that we are going to uh, play with or program they are either bluetooth or wifi so the range is limited but believe me that the drones nowadays the small drones with the with the hardware with the, the software they have come a very very long way and then the the programming has become so sophisticated that earlier used to me you used to uh, have a separate transmitter separate receiver integration power transmission board or uh, all that stuff that is actually super duper compact ground control station is where you can actually see the feed from the drone program the drone control the drone fire the drone now i don't know if you have played with this your yeah, question yes sir for the autopilot on the last slide the autopilot the gps receiver yeah and the uh, i forgot what the other one was that you mentioned the the telemetry yeah Are those okay, so as far as the hardware does that already come with most drones nowadays or is that some some hardware that we would have to add so okay so just to give you an idea i mean this is the mambo drone that you get for 40 bucks so on this mambo drone there are four motors then you have an ultrasonic sensor which is used to measure the height so there is an ultrasonic sensor that gives you the height fairly good up to about 6 to 7 meters and then there is this downward facing small camera there is a downward facing small camera that is used for stabilization optical flow which means what is doing is it's continuously taking <clears throat> pictures and then if if the drone moves towards right or towards left what it does it does something called as uh, digital correlations dci or dic and then finds out in what direction the drone has moved so it has these two sensors in addition to that there is inside a small pressure sensor or a barometer inside if the barometer is inside 
barometer gives us an approximate estimate of height where the drone is. Here is what's happening. You have a barometer that is noisy. You have, you don't have to, oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens is there is a barometer that is used to measure that can be that will give you approximate height. You also have an ultrasonic sensor that is going to give you height. These two measurements are noisy. Once again, these two measurements are noisy. So there is a Kalman filter inside. There is a Kalman filter inside that takes these noisy measurements and gives the best possible estimate. And then in addition to that, there is an INU. There is three axis accelerometer and three axis gyroscope because this drone can go left, right, up, down. It can turn, rotate, roll, pitch, and yaw. All that information can be acquired using the accelerometer and gyroscope. Again, the measurements that we are going to get from accelerometer and gyroscopes are going to be noisy. Again, you need filter. And then, of course, there is battery inside. Uh, if you go to Talo, Talo has uh, basically ultra, uh, ultra uh, infrared sensors at the bottom. And it also has the pressure sensor. It also has the IMU but it has a front facing camera. Now, if you think about the drone, drone is an under actuated system. What do you mean by under actuated system? Think about the drone, which is in three dimensional space. It can go forward, backward, left, right, up, down, roll, pitch, and yaw, which means it has six degrees of freedom but it does not have six actuators. That's why it is called as under actuated system. Now, what do I mean? What is the implication of being under actuated? If you have the drone, <clears throat> this drone cannot go like this. 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 This drone can go up and down. If this drone needs to go left, it has to tilt and go. If this drone has to go forward, it has to tilt and go. It cannot stay horizontal and go left, right, forward, backward, because this drone is under actuated. So, which means there has to be a change in the direction of thrust. So you have some component of thrust going forward, some component of thrust going leftward, only then the drone can go for uh, go in that direction. So the next thing is, <clears throat> if you are into drone building, uh, this is the whole the whole thing that you have to do. You will have a central pick hop, then you will have a multiple. Yeah. So basically, sensors. So. Obstacle detection can be done using optical, in these drones, it is done using optical cameras. So if you see the obstacle, uh, what, depending up, let me see, uh, how can I answer this question? Uh, so obstacle detection can be done by multiple ways. Either you can have something called as LIDAR, wherein you have the radar signal and you're reconstructing. You can do the same thing with cameras, but what you want to do is you want to combine that information and come up with some sort of representation of the obstacle. So the drone knows where the obstacle is, what is the shape and size of the obstacle, and then your control algorithm would maneuver around it. And don't worry, that will be discussed in perception. We are going to talk about perception in this class. Uh, so we will study the obstacle avoidance, construction, all that stuff in, in perception. It's, it's not difficult. And I promise you that, and I have to, so you have projects. In one of those projects, there is going to be a lab activity 
wherein you program the drone for obstacle avoidance. There will be a lab activity where you would program the drone for face detection. What are the lab activity we have? So we have five lab activities, right? Yeah. So you have about five lab activities that will give you idea of uh, how to program the drone with ROS, uh, how to do the face detection, how to do the control hover, and all that. Huh? Object, Object detection and all that stuff. So you will have good uh, programming experience uh, with with, uh, with those. So you'll get understanding of perception and you get understanding of how to play with drones. And But those are like high level labs wherein you are given the APIs and you, you actually implement those APIs. But the labs with Mambo, you would be actually playing with the flight control software. So wherein you would go and then tune the games and see whether the Mambo is stable, Mambo is not stable, Mambo is falling. And uh, so there is also a simulator for Mambo in MATLAB that I will show you. Just bear with me. There is a lot of interesting stuff in this course. Let's see if we, if we continue in class mode, that would be awesome. So DJI is a, a, a Chinese company and one of my students, uh, Dang Lee, is currently working in DJI. He's developing flight control algorithms. So DJI 450 is a very famous platform. Uh, then there is DJI F, uh, uh, 550, which is a uh, hexacopter. Then this is, I think, an octocopter, folding octocopter, and that is again a quadcopter. So fuselage is basically uh, the things with the frame. So you have the frame where it has rotors, it, it contains the battery, it contains the structure of the aircraft. Then how do you define <clears throat> the fuselage? So fuselage is defined in terms of its mass parameters, its basic dimension parameters, and then moment of inertia and all the dynamic parameters. And fuselage design depends upon what you are trying to achieve. Sometimes some drones, they have folding fuselage, folding arms, some drones, which are basically sliding. Uh, there is a drone that, was, that came out of Professor Wenlong Gans lab, where that drone could morph, it means that drone could shrink or could expand depending upon the, the obstacle. So if there is a window with small size, then basically the drone will pull down the arms and become a smaller drone, go forward and then expand. It, it used the concept from foldable robotics uh, from that process lab, professor acoustic lab, and that, that, is the, that is how they build the drone. Then there are different configurations. You have quad, you have X, you have hexa, you have hexa X, Y, octo, octo, X8. So there are lots and lots of different types of drones that you can actually uh, think of. Then different materials that are used for fissure large. Question, yeah. Oh, question. Yeah, uh, the, so usually uh, the, okay. It's a good question. These two drones that we are gonna play with, they have DC motors, but they are not brushless DC motors. These are brush DC motors. That's why if you watch, observe the drone, there are two wires which are coming out that they go to the main PCB. So these small drones, <clears throat> have brushed motors, but these large drones have brushless DC motors. And there are advantages and disadvantages of uh, these motor designs. Basically, the basic biggest advantage of brushed DC motors is cost. They are inexpensive. You don't need a separate ESC. And then they are more robust and they work very well uh, when the size is small. If you are going to go for a larger platform, then typically I have not seen brush in the DC motors on the larger drone platform. Because when you have a larger platform, then you have the size and the weight and all the considerations are actually dictate uh, the configuration. So I have seen brush ESCs. So usually you don't need ESCs for brush, <clears throat> you just need MOSFETs, simple drivers. 
So these are the brush DC motors. So uh, I hope I answer Keshav Prakash's question. Now you have something called as the landing gear that is used for landing. You could have a landing gear that folds. And I don't know if you have seen the DARPA flying car concept. What they did is basically they added the hoverboard wheels onto the landing gear. So basically when it lands, it sort of becomes a car. So that is the basic concept uh, in, in DARPA flying car. And it's actually the scale is much bigger. So now airframe, uh, what you have is finally you could have a ducted fan. Uh, basically that is a, a, another parrot platform. So you can, you have a ducted fan. Uh, of the idea of ducted fan, fan is you basically improve the airflow. You basically improve the thrust and uh, the make the, the actually uh, increase the efficiency. So there is something that I want to talk here at one point. Uh, just what is the difference between the fan and the prop? So the purpose of fan is to create air movement. The fan is designed in such a way that the blade angles, they push the air. The purpose of the prop is to create the pressure differential across so that you get thrust. So there is a difference between the fan and there is a difference in prop. So, so if you look at the blades, I don't know if you observe the blades for the drones, the angles, the angle of attacks are quite high. On the other hand, if you look at the fan, the angle of attack is not that high. And then basically they have sweeping type of pattern. So again, that depends upon the design, what you're looking at, but the fans, the fa yeah, question. So if you're using uh, fans that are designed for pressure, have uh, more uh, less air, less air gaps between them to maintain that pressure, why would you have to do What, what, what? Why would you have only like two small props and usually pressure props usually have higher uh, spin density? Yeah, so I tell you the reason why you can you can add. So you're meaning why there is just one blade? Yeah. Why don't you have more blades? Yeah. You can add more blades. The problem here is, and I have very practical experience with these blades, is these blades rotate at very high speed. Balancing the blade is a pain. So if you have a quadcopter, mostly I have seen going all the way up to three blades. So I mean, I have seen quads going up to three blades, but balancing those blades, balancing those props is tricky. And if you look at the textbook, uh, there is a section where she talks about the rig, where you that rig is used to balance props, just like so the car car wheels. But that is how you balance the props. That is how you balance. Basically, there is a static balancing machine, there is a dynamic balancing machine, and all that. So usually on small drones. Two, sometimes you go up to three, uh, but uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, helicopter would have two, but the tail rotor of the helicopter can have uh, as up to six. So, so it's again, depends upon the, the design. Now, does it, uh, Everyone know what Bernoulli principle is? Okay. Now, Bernoulli's principle is the conservation of energy in fluid mechanics. Bernoulli's principle is conservation of energy in fluid mechanics. So what are the types of energies? So think about it. There is a kinetic energy. There is a potential energy. And in fluids, there is pressure energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and the, the uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, and the pressure energy. If you think about the basic fluid mechanics, the total energy remains constant, which means 
think about it if the velocity of fluid is increasing if the velocity of fluid is increasing which means the kinetic energy is increasing you agree with me which means that increase in kinetic energy comes from somewhere else which is drop in the pressure energy so think about it like you have a pot there is kinetic energy and there is potential energy and there is pressure energy potential energy is same everywhere for fluid for the sake of discussion potential energy is same so there are two things there is a kinetic energy there is a pressure energy if kinetic energy is going that means the pressure pressure energy has to go down what does that mean think about an air foil on the air foil if you have an air flow coming in the air flow gets split some some air flow goes on top some air flow goes on bottom and there is a differential in the velocity of the fluid on the top and the bottom so the velocity of the fluid at top velocity of the fluid at top is greater than the velocity of fluid at bottom so when the velocity at top is greater the pressure is low that means you are going to get a low pressure region on the top higher pressure region at the bottom that is going to give you less everyone understood this so and there is something called as patta jetowski theorem the patta comes from that so there is a, a patta jetowski i thought professor i think he taught you patta jetowski theorem right the, the circulation of around the cylinder and all that stuff so the idea is basic principles of fluid mechanics is if you create the higher velocity the pressure is going to drop pressure is going to drop which means because of the differential pressure you are going to generate a thrust that is the fundamental aerodynamics but things are not as simple because uh, air flow is compressible so basically you have compressibility effects temperature effects and th those make these things more complicated so now so if you have a duct it is more efficient but then the problem with duct is even though it is efficient it adds weight so basically there is some type of balance you are going to look at and then that actually decides what type of configuration you will use prop battery ecs that is part of the propulsion system and we are going to do the propulsion system modeling wherein you can have a very simple propulsion system model and you can actually make it super complicated by adding the motor model adding the hysteresis model adding the battery model and all the type of stuff but good news is matlab uav toolbox if you don't have it install it matlab uav toolbox has the course and simulating block diagram related to the dynamics propulsion battery so you can actually create a simulator for quadcopter inside the matlab and we would do that uh, sometime uh, next month depending prop design is a, a, a field of engineering in itself so there are different designs of props uh, going from simple prop wood prop then the angle of attacks the shape the size and depending upon if you go to the props they will always have something called as the pod which is the length uh, across the prop size and the overall length and then basically they have the coefficients kt which gives you the amount of thrust as the function of speed and so on so again props and batteries and motor they are part of the propulsion system and you can't just use any prop the props are sized to the motor so you have to use the right combination of motor right combination of prop so that you would get the optimal efficiency from that system you can have clockwise counter clockwise so this figure is upside down but that shows you the chord of the prop which is the mean chord length and which is actually located at two third of the diameter of the prop and uh, basically there is the concept of pitch of the prop 
So, for example, if you look at the props, usually they are said they are denoted as 10 times 45. That means the diameter is 10 inches and the pitch is 4.5 inches. That is how. Again, two blade, two blade prop, three blade prop, four blade prop, and again. Uh, so this is uh, this is the answer to your question. So two blade props, they are for for small scale. They are more efficient than three blade or four blade props. That's why majority of the props that you see are two blade props. And again, uh, basically there are rotation rates. And depending upon what type of UAV or what type of quad that you are going to fly, you are going to use the props that rotate at slow speed, that rotate at high speed. And that also depends upon the amount of thrust that needs to be generated. That also depends upon the amount of agility that you want. And then uh, one thing that I want to tell you is uh, there is a lot of uh, heuristics and empirical data that goes behind designing the UAV. So the author of this book has actually put out an online tool, and that's fantastic. It's an online tool that would help you to design the UAV for your mission. So what it has, it contains the database of all the props, all the motors, all the batteries, their characteristics, their efficiency curves. Once you decide the mission, say that you want your UAV, UAV to hover for eight minutes, once you decide that this should be the speed, this is the endurance, you put in that data and then gradually move step by step by step. And then at the end, it will give you a nice bill of material from available vendors of the shelf parts that you can purchase and put that UAV together. So we will take a look at that tool as well. Now there is something called as the efficiency of the prop and you have to be super duper careful. You want to match the battery efficiency, prop efficiency, and there is an operating curve. There is an operating curve for the prop, there is an operating curve for the battery, and there is an overall operating curve for the entire UV system. So please understand <clears throat> propeller uh, mechanical power is output torque multiplied by prop speed, but you have you will be looking at most of the time something called as the specific thrust, which is the thrust generated by prop divided by the mechanical power that is required to generate that thrust. Prop material, they go all the way from carbon fiber, wood, plastic, uh, acrylic, no, not acrylic, so ABS and uh, uh, other interesting materials. This is the prop balancing rig that I was talking about, that if you have a prop, you have to put this on the rig and then rotate it and see uh, where the prop is and then basically start removing the material or adding material so that that is balanced. An unbalanced prop uh, is very, very dangerous. If you have an unbalanced prop, the, the dynamics of the UAV will be compromised. The motor, you have brushless motor, you have brushed motor. If you have a brushless motor, usually you have a hard effect sensor. In the and then depending upon the application, depending upon the power, depending upon the speed, you can use different types of motors. And we are going to talk about in detail on using the motors, how to model motors, what is the mechanical model, RC model for the motor, and then we'll interface that with the prop model. Working principle of motor, I'm presuming that everyone knows that you have a brush motor or a brushless DC motor. And basically uh, uh, what you do in the case of brushless motor, it's basically you excite the coils sequentially so that the rotor that is at the center gets energized and then it gets itself aligned so that the magnetic lines of flux can pass to the, to the coil through the rotor with the least amount of resistance. So basically you're gonna start exciting and as you start exciting the coils, the rotor is going to rotate. And then basically you, you increase that excitation frequency and the rotor would rotate at a very high speed. And then there are different types of configurations. Uh, if you want, uh, you can, on the small drones, you can use the brush motors. And for brush motors, what you have is you have the commutator, 
you have the the brush and then you have the magnets and then what you do is you energize the coil and basically because of the process of commutation the the, the rotor starts rotating now how do you size now motor is always given in terms of kv value and kv value is the one that you would choose certain kv value if you want to look at the motor there are two types of motors one is called the inner runner motor and the other one is called the outer runner motor in the inner runner motor basically the inner rotor rotates outer side is fixed in the outer runner motor the is the central core is mounted fixed and the outside rotates so you have an inner runner or you can have an outer runner and then depending upon the application you can use something called as the coaxial motor wherein you have an inner runner and outer run runner in one uh, case wherein you the inner runner rotates clockwise outer runner rotates counterclockwise so basically the torque the reaction torque and the reaction torque they cancel each other out so again if you look at the motor specs typically the motor specs are given in the table and then whenever you choose a motor clearly the manufacturer would specify the type of ESC that needs to be used these are some efficiency equations motor efficiency is mechanical power divided by electrical power overall specific thrust is the thrust of the prop divided by the electric power uh, electrical power that is supplied and then whenever you are going to go for the motor selection you will have a model number then you will have the voltage which will show you the total the current power speed efficiency torque and the temperature that at which that motor would run and please note uh, earlier it was difficult you have to go to the catalog items and select the part but if you look at the tool that the textbook author has developed it's very nice it actually uh, interfaces the database so all this data is there you just go step by step and finally your uav is completely designed as per spec so it actually calculates the torque and efficiencies so esc is something like this so esc is comprising of mosfets and other stuff so it's sort of an electronic board that would actually cycle the excite the coils sequentially so that the motor would run ESCs typically can be controlled with a microcontroller uh, through pwm the pulse width modulation allows you to increase the speed decrease the speed of the motor or change the direction of rotation clockwise counterclockwise etc and so ESCs, I don't know if you have played with the ESCs. ESCs look like this. And ESCs, I want you to observe this very important thing. If you have not played with the ESCs on the left. So if you look at on the uh, uh, Ternigi ESC, on the top, there are three wires. Those three wires connect to the three wires coming from the motor because it's a three phase supply. If you look at the bottom, there is a black wire and there is a red wire. That is that goes to the battery, positive and negative. And there is a pig tail. So as you see that that small wire that is connected, that goes to the PWM or signal of the receiver. And that is how you control the speed and the direction of rotation of the motor. And sometimes the the, uh, the motor could be censored or sensorless there are two types of sensors there could be a hall effect sensor or there could be an optical sensor so basically ESCs uh, can interface with censored motors ESCs can interface with sensorless motor speed control of censored motor is much easier or more accurate compared to the sensorless motor then again, if you look at the ESCs, ESCs control the motors, so they run at very high frequency. There is a refresh rate, and there are parameters of ESCs 
there is a heat dissipation capacity, the current capacity, all these properties you have to take into account when you are selecting the ESCs. Sometimes you have to program the ESCs because ESCs have their own microcontroller. So there is something called as a programming card. What you see here is a hobby king programming card that is allowed that can that can be used to program the hobby king ESCs for particular configuration. Sometimes you want immediate break-in. Sometimes you want 50% throttle. So you can adjust the power characteristic flow. You can adjust the speed. You can adjust the braking properties. So with all that, so there is a hobby king card. You can actually program the ESC. Yeah. Uh, in case of uh, pre-driving mode, uh, uh, I have observed that the ESC output, uh, even if it's slow, it's not very really accurate. Is it just saying this for the drone motor? Or? Okay, so basically, the Hall effect sensor, which are used in the brushless DC motors, they are not really for closed loop control. The Hall effect sensors actually tell the ESC the, the, the coil that needs to be activated for the commutation, the effective commutation. You can't, so Hall effect sensor means there are three Hall effect sensors. And basically that tells you, that tells the EAC in what direction the, the motor is rotated. And what, what is the next coil that needs to be extracted? You cannot do accurate closed loop control with both. If you really want to do an accurate closed loop control, you need to add some sort of encoder. And then you can do, uh, but here is the thing. What is the purpose of these motors? The purpose of these motors is to run at certain speed and generate the thrust. We are not really looking at the position control of these motors. We just want these motors to run at certain speed because the thrust is proportional to speed. So that's why you don't need a closed loop higher control on this. So you have square wave generator, sinusoidal driver, and then there are exotic techniques for control of motors. Motor control it itself is a topic uh, of, uh, of research. Uh, again, you have batteries. Nowadays, there is a lot of advancement in battery technologies. So you have foldable batteries. You have the batteries that are extremely small. You have batteries that are super lightweight. And you can actually, uh, uh, you are looking at the power density here, but, but here is the issue with batteries. Now I want you to think about a UAV, which is uh, running on batteries and UAV, which is running on fuel. As the fuel is burned, the UAV becomes lighter. So which means the payload gets lighter as the fuel is depleted. On the battery, payload remains the same, even though the battery is depleted. It means if you have a fully depleted battery, that's a dead weight on the AV. So that is something that you have to keep in mind as a designer uh, when you are trying to design the UAV. And then you can have series parallel configurations, and that will allow you to apply the amount, the, the right of type of the right amount of voltage. Battery is governed by the battery capacity and discharge rate given in C. And the the amp uh, so batteries usually would have milliamp hour rating. That means how many amps it can supply for one hour. Discharge rate is given as the uh, so 15C, 20C, 30C. Those Cs these are basically the current discharge rate. So for an example, just take a look here. If you have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with the discharge rate of 20C which means it can actually give you 100 amps. So that is how that discharge rate is calculated. Then batteries would have certain resistance. And again, that is another important parameter because that is why the batteries heat up. When you, when you have a LiPo battery, you wanna be super duper careful because if that LiPo battery heats up, it may catch fire. And then you have RC transmitter and receiver, and there are different modalities and wireless communications that can happen between the receiver and the transmitter. 
and depending upon the range you want depending upon the the type of communication you want depending upon the encryption security that you need you use different types of transmission rc protocols so this is a, a typical transmitter wherein what you have is you have the throttle uh, left and uh, you have the this is actually i think mode two uh, receiver you have the stick on the left and right and you can control the different control surfaces you can actually program this uh, transmitter for the the drones for aircrafts and you can actually decide the mixing algorithm so you can actually mix the servos there are different frequencies usually the rc receivers they run at 2.4 gigahertz and then uh, the range can go anywhere between one mile to two miles. The old receivers were 72 megahertz, but nowadays I have seen majority of them at 2.4 gigahertz. RC receivers, they have PCM and PPM type of modulation. So if you are into really into drone programming, flying RC planes, then you would pay attention to what type of modulation the receiver has. And again, it depends upon number of channels you have the type of mixing you need and uh, the level of programming and sophistication that you need to fly certain types of things. And then there is mode one, mode two, and there are different channels. And this is a typical configuration. So if you have a mode one receiver, a mode one receiver pitch, yaw, throttle and roll are reverse compared to mode two. So typically in the United States, we use mode two type of transmitters. And then you have throttle, remote control, and then there are some transmitters that you can actually go online and build it yourself. And there are Arduino based transmitters, there are Arduino based receivers that you can actually use and uh, build yourself. So, so basically what you see there is the Arduino pilot. I was involved in uh, development of programming of that. So basically it's an Arduino based AVR microcontroller and you can actually flash the flight control software and the interface with GPS. And there's an IMU on, on the. Again, just think we talked about in um, Mambo, we have a barometer, we have an ultrasonic rangefinder, and we have an IMU. But these are the old systems, they were huge. Nowadays, because of the advancement in MEMS technology, they have become super duper small. And function of autopilot is to stabilize and fly the quadcopter or the plane from point A to point B. And then we are going to talk about the perception wherein understanding the, the surrounding, that perception part is in lesson seven and nine. We are going to talk about the control, which is the closed loop control that would be discussed in chapter 11 and 12. And then the last part is something related to AI and uh, decision-making capacity that would be uh, in uh, lesson 13 and 14. So this book is quite comprehensive. And what we are going to do is uh, I'm going to mix it with uh, Mambo and Telo Labs. So not only you will get some understanding of the theory concepts, but you'll also get some hands-on experience in programming. There are lots and lots of autopilots, that uh, hobby autopilots, the commercial autopilots that they have uh, come. There are a lot of open source projects. There are different uh, autopilots and their configurations. I would encourage you to take a look at those. This is information. There is ground, different ground control systems, some in open source, some in closed source. And then uh, you can actually download, actually, Crazy Fly, Crazy Pony, GDRB then uh, mission planner auto pilot open pilot they are actually you can download uh, they are open source radio telemetry is getting capturing the video and sending it to the ground signal a ground station and that is done again through the, on the same channel or on the separate channel and you can have uh, again transmitter and receiver for the telemetry for radio telemetry you will talk about transmission dis dis uh, distance transmission rate that dictates whether you can get 4k video or you get 750p different protocols for transmission and on telo and the mambo uh, mambo drones actually on 
mambo drone uh, the telemetry is bluetooth on telo drone the telemetry is through wi-fi so and again uh, you can have different types of protocols for telemetry in conclusion uh, we talked about the airframes propulsion system and we will talk about them in more detail as we study uh, lesson three and lesson four we would look at command and control in lesson seven nine and then decision in 13 14 and then yeah unmanned vehicles uh, nowadays they are a very hot area of research so i would encourage you to take a look at what's out there look at the resources and get some hands-on experience with uh, 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 quadcopters, octocopters. And with that, what I want to do is, I want to show you some important information uh, or some important lesson on MATLAB. And then, uh, okay, so if you have MATLAB, So what I want you to do is, uh, let me see, let me, uh, so let me share my entire screen for my online students. And step one, is if you have MATLAB, I want you to go to MATLAB. In MATLAB, I want you to go to add-ons and in add-ons, there is Parrot. So install Simulink package for Parrot mini drones. Install MATLAB package for Parrot mini drones. Install aerospace block set. And then there is UAV block set. So UAV toolbox that needs to be installed. Simulink 3D animation needs to be installed. Simulink control design needs to be installed. If you want to use ROS from MATLAB, you will have to install the ROS toolbox. For perception, you will have to install the computer vision and mapping toolbox. And This is an ultimate UAV tutorial with white paper and Simulink models. And I'm going to take this as a case study, not now, at the end, where you can actually go from start to finish and develop a flight simulator inside uh, MATLAB. So these are the toolboxes that you need to have. What? Write down somewhere. Okay, yeah, okay. You want me to go, okay. No, because, uh, uh, yeah. And, and don't worry too much about it because uh, what happens is if we start doing an exercise and if you don't have the toolbox, you can immediately install. So it's, it should not be. So once again, Parrot mini drones support package, MATLAB uh, Parrot drone, aerospace block set. Then uh, you will have to go UAV toolbox, UAV toolbox, UAV toolbox, Simulink 3D animation, Simulink control design, ROS toolbox, computer vision, mapping. If you want to interface with Unreal Engine, uh, you can do this, but I'm not gonna do Unreal Engine. 
uh, UAV toolbox with uh, white paper and Simulink model that we will uh, study towards the end of the class. I mean, end of the, the course. Now, what I want to do is add on, manage add on. And what I want to do is, I want to give you a small demo of how to flash the firmware for the Mambo. It's not simple, it's tricky. And the reason it is tricky because depending upon the type of Bluetooth driver you have, type of Bluetooth stack you have, and type of operating system you have, it changes. As a matter of fact, different versions of Windows, believe it or not, they get shipped with different drivers and some of them may not work. So I'm gonna show you a generic version. So this is this is the the Mambo. You attach the the micro USB and attach micro USB onto your hub. Then you go to settings. Click on settings. It will actually open up the connect current Mambo to the MATLAB. And then what you do is go on next and it will detect. So please note this procedure works with Parrot Mambo. It does not work with Parrot Rolling Spider. It does not work with Parrot AR. It does not work with Parrot AX, uh, the X drone. Once this is done, you have to press next. And I want you to observe the drone. What it will do is it will flash the firmware. And then I don't have a spare battery here, but what you need to do is you need to put the battery inside and then turn, plug it out. Then what it will do is it will cycle through its firmware and reset the microcontroller. And once all that done, once all that done, once you plug that back in, so done. This is a critical step that I want you to understand. Assuming the firmware is updated, you will have to go to device manager. In device manager, you would have to go to other devices and in other devices you are gonna have something something called as rdns so remote ndis compatible device you will have to install this so that you can set up a bluetooth connection a local connection to parrot mambo if you don't install this remote NDIS compatible device, you won't be able to communicate with Parrot Mumbo via Bluetooth. Once that is done, yeah. Uh, where do we install that from? Oh, it's built inside. Uh, okay, let, let me do this. Since you asked, uninstall it. Okay, now there is no device, I will attach. And then what should happen is you will see it will give you an RDNS prompt. Can you see that RD, RM, DRS? Yes. This is what should happen. After you update the firmware for your product, you need to 
it is super important step. Connect it back again, go to device manager and Windows will tell you that hey, it cannot find out the remote network device. Here, you have to right click, update driver. Right click, update driver, browse myself for a computer available list. Then you have to go down, go to network devices, network adapter. And actually all these steps are given on MathWorks website, but they could be a little bit different, difficult to follow. And then it will give you the different manufacturers. You have to go down, you have to go down to Microsoft. Microsoft, and then you go down in Microsoft. There is, can you see that remote ND, NDIS compatible device? Create, click next. Windows will not like it. Windows will give you an error, but still you have to continue. And then this will be done. Thank you. Now, what is the next step? Next step is you will have to, so this is actually again, uh, very important. So the next step, I am out of time. The next step is you will have to go to Bluetooth, right click. Join personal area network. And on personal area network, I'll show you. If this should not be, I'll remove this. Remove device. Then say add a device. And then it's going to give you two mambo, not one, two mambo. So you see, there is one mambo. And wait for it. The second mambo is coming. Now, out of that, we don't know which mambo allows us to create a personal area network. So, the, so what it means is there are two services, Bluetooth services on mambo. We have to choose one service out of it. Can you see there are two mambos? Yeah. Now you have to just go with maybe let's see. I'll go with unknown. So Mambo unknown. Next. And how do you know that is successful? You will, so you will notice that it is not successful. Add a device. So yeah. Sir, from the very beginning, before you flash the firmware, you said put the battery on. So we should have the battery off, plug it in, flash the firmware, then unplug it, and then put the battery in. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Or, or you can keep the battery in, just uh, remove the uh, USB cable, it will do it. I, and the only thing is I don't have battery with me. So it will get installed and then, yeah, yeah. It is. And all these steps are shown on MATLAB website. Yeah, this will take several minutes and once that mambo is installed, uh, you should be able to construct, you should be able to create a local area network and then program the drone. So I'm gonna stop here. And then if you want, I would be in my office if you want to pick up the drone. Thank <laughs> you.